by the he's holding a uh, what appears to be a telex in his hand. Uh, he also is holding uh, uh, sunglasses in his other hand, which suggests that he had just come in from the outside and when someone handed him this uh, telex. Why did he put those down? If he if he was posing for a picture, or was it an impromptu looking picture? It, it looks like it was an impromptu type of thing. He just came in. They brought in the weather balloon. Okay, over here, General Ramey, we, we want a shot of you. Everything was moving quickly. Bang bang. In yeah. He still has his cap on, for that matter. Yeah. He still has his cap on, and uh, so he's holding this telex, and uh, you know. Uh, with uh, without modern computers and uh, what have you, uh, nobody could re- you couldn't read anything on that. You know, it's just uh, something he's holding. But with the advent of uh, computer software, uh, I think Don and uh, who was the doctor? Uh, doctor Richard Haynes. Richard Haynes uh, around uh, in the early '90s tried to just by uh, extreme magnification try to read the the memo and i think uh, they were e- able to read just a few letters or maybe a word or two but nothing that made any sense but with modern computers and software we are now able to read uh portions of that uh telex that he's holding in his hand and it's not talking about uh, a crashed weather balloon it's talking about a crashed disk that's amazing. it al- it also mentions the uh dead aliens the cadavers that were uh, in the wreck that was forwarded to Fort Worth uh, Army Airfield in Texas. And it's, and it's in his hand. Victims of the wreck. This is all in his hand. So we know the provenance, uh, the, you know, the origin of this memo. It's not, a, it's not something that a, a UFO buff cooked up. It's in a photograph that was taken by a photographer for the Fort Worth Star Telegram, J. Bond Johnson. We know the origin of this memo, and we can read the words, some of them, a good portion of them. And it's talking about uh, the uh, disc that was forwarded. It, it mentions the victims of the wreck. Uh, we know that if uh, um, if they had been military victims, they would have been called casualties, not victims. It's, uh, and and whether balloons don't have victims unless uh, one landed on your head i guess and smothered you yeah. i don't know but uh, i'd love to i'd love, love to know where this telex is now huh? um you know that's a, that's a good question george um i have uh, two possibilities on that if if uh Ramey didn't burn it then who knows maybe he did but uh, maybe he did yeah. we, we have uh we have had stories from neighbors of the Rameys that uh, there's the uh, proverbial trunk in his attic. Oh, it still could be there. It still could be there. If not, and, you know, and we've never been able, you know, we've never been to the Rameys residence, uh, but we've heard that story several, several times over of a trunk. Also uh, one uh, involving the uh, Blanchard uh, a trunk somewhere. Uh, boy, wouldn't we like to, you know, get a look at those? But sure. uh, the the other possibility is I talked to a, a uh, an author of a book on Pearl Harbor, and he spent 20 years in archives researching documents on uh, regarding the uh, Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Spent 20 years. So I I called him one time uh, a few years ago. I said, I explained about the telex, and I said, well, if it were you, where would you think that that telex might wind up? What archive would that be in? And so he gave me a list of uh, most probable to least probable, and I still have that list of where that that telex, if it is archived, where it would uh, where it would be. So, um, what a dramatic story that would be. Absolutely, oh uh, absolutely. It's talk that telex t- to us, and I think Don agrees, is a smoking gun. That's what we call the smoking gun of Roswell. It's just, uh, uh, I mean, it, it it can't be talking about anything other than the Roswell crash. That's the only thing that makes sense. Are there any children uh, from uh, from Ramey that uh, are out there that could talk about this? Well. 
yes, but he ha- he hasn't. <laughs> and, uh, in fact, uh, the son of uh, General Ramey went through the museum a few years ago. Uh, in Roswell, yes. In Roswell, yes. The UFO Museum in Roswell. And, uh, Don, I think we are invited down, aren't we? The door was <laughs> left open, not directly invited, but um, that uh, we should stay in touch and... We've yet to uh, take him up on such an invitation, but we really should. We really should. Why isn't he saying much? Well, I think, first of all, the, the general to this day, you know, serves as the uh, the snidely whiplash, the 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 the, the, the sinister uh, element behind, as far as behind the cover up of the, the entire incident. You know, General Ramey, he's the one who had the weather balloon press conference. He's the one who, you know, essentially let the air out of the Roswell flying saucer, so to speak. Sure. And his family, as a result, just by that name and anyone confronting them, having any background, any knowledge of the subject, uh, they have this black eye, so to speak. They can make it good, though. They certainly could. Absolutely. And... Though true to form, uh, like Ramey would go on, for example, he was often referred to as the Air Force saucer man. He was always the spokesperson. Interestingly enough, he would become a consultant to the Air Force Project Blue Book on the subject. And yet he was one of their chief debunkers. He went out of his way for years trying to explain away the subject. In fact, as far as we can determine, he was also the instrument behind the entire ridicule factor days after the press conference at Fort Worth, he was on an El Paso radio program, and he was asked if that explained Roswell. Fine, but what about all the other sightings throughout the country? He agreed, yes, there had been sightings in every state throughout the country at that time, except for Kansas, which was a dry state. Interesting. And that came from Ramey. Yeah. And we've all had that knee jerk, you know, we had that indoctrination. Um, since that, um, you know, people only over imbibe see such things. You two have done a great job with both the witness books, witness to Roswell unmasking the 60 year cover up. And then of course, uh, witness to Roswell, the unmasking the government's biggest cover up, which came out last year. I want to take some time after the break to talk about both those books because they flow together perfectly. Um, Thank you, George. Do, do you think we'll get the bottom line answer to Roswell? Is anybody ever going to come forward and and just solve this for us? And I don't mean reporters like you two and investigators, but some government official, uh, someone that uh, is either a uh, participant or a, uh, a corollary uh, in the same uh, well in a, in a place to know. My my answer is no. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think uh, what's the because uh, as we stated before, the government is not ever, ever, ever going to come clean on this case. And wh- whoever would think about that would also have to think about their career. And uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that what we're doing is we're we're putting this case together, one witness at a time. Most of the the information we get that's just in. Uh, little snippets, little snippets. We don't get that uh, uh, person that uh, that sort of knows the whole picture. That that person hasn't appeared, and uh, we don't think uh, that person is going to appear. So uh, we have to do it like we are. And uh, the moment we get a uh, an incontrovertible piece of physical evidence, and we are looking hard for that. We will we will uh, hold a press conference on that. And, Super. Uh, uh, and come that. and come on this program. Absolutely. We're going to be back in a moment. We'll have Tom and Don to tie together their two works of witness to Roswell. Back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. On our next Coast to Coast program, Linda Moulton Howe, our investigative reporter, joins us with a number of stories of high strangeness. And next hour, we'll take phone calls with Tom Carey and Don Schmidt as we are witnesses to Roswell, and we'll be back with both of them in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. 